Let's welcome Fernando. Pete the shirt, Pete the background. Welcome, Fernando, to Marketing for the Now. Thanks, man. I'm super excited to be here. It's great to, to be talking to you guys. Fernando, thank you so much for being here. Obviously, uh, a lot of admiration. We run in very similar circles. We haven't had the opportunity to jam too, too much. So I'm glad we're doing it this morning. Yes. You, you may not remember, man, but like we brought you to give a talk for the Dove team back in 2011, 12. At you the, uh, at, at Cannes in that little no, villa? Uh, no, it was in London. Oh, in it London? Before that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I still remember you telling everyone like how, when you were a kid, you were like putting signs in New Jersey uh, and looking right. at where people are driving and where they were looking at to put the sign right where they were looking I at. I appreciate that. I remember the story, man. We had lunch together back then, long time ago. I appreciate it. And it's great to see you again. And obviously it's been unbelievable to watch what you've been doing with Burger King. And I think let's go right into that. I think a lot of the interviews I've been doing in this series over the last month and a half have been around, hey, you've learned how to go fast and have many ideas during this time. And it's this novel idea. You know, obviously that's been a very big foundational thing for VaynerMedia on volume of ideas and relevance. It, subjectively watching from the outside, there've been very few people that have understood culture and, and, and having a volume of ideas and speed the way that BK and, and the overall uh, restaurant group has had. What do you attest that to, you know, how has that been over the last half decade? Do you agree with my observation and what's yeah. happened with COVID to accelerate it or status quo because you lived in that bubble? Yeah, so I think that like um, we, we evolved to become what we are today. Right. I mean, six, seven years ago, I don't think we would do things at the same pace as, as we do today. It's like training. You know what I mean? Like uh, mm -hmm. if you are like not training or just like a couch potato uh, and the next day you want to run a marathon, you probably struggle. Right. I mean, it requires time for you to uh, to get there. Uh, so back in 2014, that's when we started. Uh, and, and I think that the, the, the ingredients behind uh, the way we go about things are basically uh, we make the brand very clear uh, to the people who work with us, especially the tone of voice of the brand, you know, the personality of the brand. Like, uh, it's very easy for people to see something and say, oh, this is so Burger King, or only Burger King could do that, because our creative partners, they understand how the brand should operate. Uh, we make it clear to people that work with us, like, what's our strategy, what we are trying to accomplish, like, what are the key pillars, uh, which are basically like a filter, right? I mean, for like uh, what we are going to do. Um, and, and honestly, like, uh, we, we just try different things. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I think that we do, yeah, have, do. Some we do have some criteria, right? I mean, uh, which you develop over time. Um, I, I don't think marketing or advertising or trying to surf pop culture is something that you are born with. I think it's an acquired taste. And, uh, and, and sometimes you get right, sometimes you get wrong. Sometimes you think something's going to be huge and this is Fernando, do, 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 you, do you think net net though it wins to your point? sometimes right, sometimes wrong, sometimes you think it's gonna be huge, it doesn't, other times yeah. you didn't even think about it, it becomes, but do you think in the net, that process outperforms the classic audacious, I'm gonna come up with an idea and push it down yeah, model? No, I, I think so. Like, I think that some ideas take time to develop and that's fine. You know, it's part of the nature of certain ideas, right? I mean, sometimes an idea is tied to a date. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. an idea uh, requires you to spend a lot of time building something so that you can make it happen. Um, but like overall for me, like when people ask me like, what, what happens when it doesn't work? The answer is like nothing. Uh, but nothing tends to be a very common outcome for many marketing campaigns. So you may as well try to do something different, right? And, and be able to flip the page really quick if that doesn't work, you know? Like what people are talking about today in social, you know that like two days from now, they are on something else. This afternoon they will be uh, uh, on something else. So that's right. uh, if you want to be relevant in the, in the fast paced environment that we live in, I think that you need to find ways to do mar marketing on the now. Is, it needs to be fast paced because the world is fast paced. So, um, so I don't the see- consumer, The consumer yeah. is, so, to your point, the consumer by nature's attention is completely different than it was yeah. based on the marketing model we live in today of TV centric. It's just not, it's built on a 1965, no remote control. You will see this video in between what you're watching. Yeah. And it's the furthest thing from we live in now. Yeah. And, and you, you say that, I, I know that you, you, you are, or you were a big advocate of the Super Bowl, 
Uh, the Super Bowl is the only yeah. time of the year where people want to watch ads. I'm huge. You know, I love. I love. I love that you've been so active. You're absolutely right. I'm not a. I'm not in love with a lot of traditional things. Comma. I think the Super Bowl is grossly underpriced. Yeah. No. I know. I, I read about it and I agree because like, you are paying. Like during the whole year, you pay for people to watch something that they don't want to watch. That's right. <laughs> and there is this one day that during like a couple of hours, people is the number two reason is higher than the halftime show. People want to watch the ads. So um, it's a win-win. Uh, and, and, and if you have that in mind, if you have in mind that uh, people actually don't necessarily want to watch your ads, uh, you know, like I think it's very, uh, it's a very liberating thought because it forces you to create things that are interesting. Uh, and forces you to create things that will uh, merit their attention, you know, that they will pay, they'll give you something back, right? I mean, or that surfing a wave of pop culture that people are already talking about. And this, I think, is marketing uh, today. You know what I mean? Like, you cannot rely anymore uh, on doing, like, a, a super boring uh, TV commercial, which may, uh, which may please uh, uh, your board, you know, like, because that was like what marketing was like um, many years ago and your board is probably like, is slightly older, right? I mean, it's, it varies depending on the company you're in, but like, uh, it, it's not like that anymore. And the younger you go, the, the more relevant what we are talking about here will become, you know, for, for the kids, it's Agreed. even more so. Agreed. Roy? So your company, uh, RBI, you all handle... Popeyes, Burger King, Tim Hortons, which are three exactly. distinctly different brands in terms of their culture. With COVID, what have been some of the things that you've been able to apply across the board with all three brands versus things that you've kind of had to nitpick uh, yeah. from place to place? Yeah, they, they are very uh, different brands, even like uh, on the center of gravity of the product category they operate, right? Tim's is coffee and baked goods, Popeyes is fried chicken, and NBK is like sandwiches. Um, there are some overlaps, but they are very different. Personality-wise, they are also very different. But there were, as you said, a, a couple of things that, uh, as a company, we were able to do, uh, not leverage across the three brands, but that they, 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 they come from the same fundamental principle, right? Uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, when it comes to purpose, when it comes to doing good, uh, sustainability, just as an example, you need to do it first to then talk, you know? And I think that one thing that, uh, that the three brands did really well, and it was not necessarily a brief, it was just like the innate nature uh, of the marketing teams. Like the three brands, when COVID hit, uh, in all, most countries, I would say, the marketing team jumped into trying to do something to help society, you know what I mean? Uh, we've, honestly, without calculating the ROI, the cost per thousand, the, like nothing. You know, uh, it just felt right. So for instance, Burger King, uh, we knew that in the US, many families, they, they have their kids eating in school and school was closed. So we offer free kids meal. Uh, with mm. any purchase, you got a free kids meal. And it was a massive success for BK. In, on Tim Hortons in, in Canada, which is the biggest, largest counter for the brand, uh, is a brand that's very linked to communities, okay? Uh, it's like, it's part of the DNA of being Canadian, this Tim Hortons, right? Um, and, uh, uh, and what they did was they reached out and offered free coffee, free baked goods to healthcare professionals, to first responders, to volunteers, because that's how that brand uh, operates. Popeyes is a brand that has a very strong root in Louisiana. Uh, so what did we do? Uh, uh, Louisiana and New Orleans were one of the most affected areas in the beginning of COVID. So we went there and we offered more than a million family meals together with two different food banks. So the three brands, before we created an ad, before we ran a promotion, before we told about people that we were still safe or that we had delivery, we helped. Uh, and I think that was really critical. The other thing that we did was we took all the plans that we had pre-COVID and put them on hold or trashed them. Uh, and, and that's all good. You know, like I think that if you are, and, and, and I think going back to, uh, to the previous point, if you're not used to be nimble and to do things fast, you will struggle a lot with making that decision, you know, because it means like, fuck, like I, I can curse here, right? So fuck, like I, I've been working on this forever and now I have to trash and come up with something new, which will take forever, layers of approval, budget discussions and this and that. We didn't care. Uh, and it's funny because one of the questions that we received a lot in the beginning was like, aren't you afraid 
that your advertising will be shown next to something that's COVID related and the pandemic. And I was like, no, why would I be? Because everything I'm developing takes that context into consideration. Correct. Uh, you, you should be scared if you are being completely and for David, listen, I, yeah. I think you also know this, and obviously you're so prominent within the community, but sometimes our industry gets within itself. We talk about things that not a single human being actually yeah. is talking about. I mean, yeah. it's very calm. And to your point, the greatest and most important power right now is context. Yeah, I completely agree. Absolutely. I mean, and because the context change so frequently, you need to be able, uh, you cannot put all your eggs in the same basket and you need to be able to shift. You know, like uh, 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 people talk a lot about a pivot. You did the pivot to here, to that. Dude, you're doing pivot like every day, five times a day. <laughs> like, uh, you, it's literally the oxygen of running a business. Exactly. And, and I find that incredibly exciting and liberating uh, because it will allow, if you have a well oil machine, uh, it will allow you to do many more things uh, instead of, I used to say that in the past of my career, in the beginning of my career, uh, and that's a terrible metaphor, but I would be like a sniper. I would spend like three, four months like aiming, 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 and I would shoot. Most of the time we would hit the target, but maybe, but if we didn't, it would be another three, four months of aiming, aiming. And, and the way we approach today is more like machine gun. You, you see, like we are really good at aiming uh, with the machine gun too. Uh, and we are going to hit the, the right direction. And, and I think that because we do that approach, we are able to capitalize more into trends, more into what people are talking about. Relevance, relevance, yes. right? I mean, this exactly. industry is obsessed with potential reach and it's missing the mark on relevance. Like people, it's hard to get people excited. Like for me, when, when I literally in a one year period watch both the final race of a triple crown race and an enormously important boxing match and the and goddamn Burger King man is the king is yes, in both settings. That. Yeah. That's that's very big relevance to me. I'm like, yeah. oh, this brand, this is subconscious. Man, just the, like the next bias, day, just the, the next day people are talking almost the same about Mayweather and Pacquiao than they were talking about the king beating uh, Kimo uh, because uh, the king came with Mayweather and Kimo came yep. with Pacquiao. And it that's became right. a conversation in itself. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you knew where everyone would be looking. Yeah, relevant. like, so find a relevant Following way attention. to insert your, your, your brand or your product or your message into that. I couldn't agree more. I, well, I could talk to you for an hour and a half. We may need to do that podcast. Dude, we need to organize you know, that. Yes, yes, we will uh, organize yeah, that. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. so nice to, to talk to you guys. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks, Ryan.